Okay, fair warning. This video is going to be a weird one. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to show you how to ruin a mix. I've spent the last decade showing you how to get good mixes. Let's, uh, let's try a different approach, and I'll show you how to ruin a mix, even a mix where the song was recorded really well, and the whole get it right at the source thing is rocking. So here's our starting tracks here. There are no plugins in this session. Um, you're just hearing the raw tracks. This was all recorded in my basement at the last studio. Uh, this is one of the songs off of my EP, Amen. And get it right at the source, check. Sounds great. What I'm realizing is while, of course, it's hard to get a good mix if the tracks don't sound good, you can flip that around, and even if you do a good job in the recording phase, you can still absolutely ruin things in the mixing phase. So let's... Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of both nervous and excited, but let's try to ruin this and see if maybe we can, in a weird way, learn something from it. All right, let's start with just the drums. Now, before I dive in, the reason I'm doing this is over the years, I've heard lots of mixes from folks and lots of mixes from people who are mixing tracks that I already know, and they, a lot of times, the, the mixes that don't sound that great, the main symptom is they're just overdoing things. They're doing too much. They're too heavy handed with even just simple tools like EQ and compression. And that's what I want to maybe demonstrate today. And maybe this will be, maybe this, maybe this will be fun. You know, breaking things is fun. So let's start with just the drums. I've got every, everything muted but the drums. So maybe they say, you know what, I'm going to start I'm going to start with compression. So they pull out whatever compressor and they go to work. But I'm going to go as high of a ratio as I can and do something like a faster attack and release. Like a real fast attack. Let's just get it real snappy. Let's see what happens. Okay, that's already way too much compression. The kick drum is pretty much ruined. Snare's not bad. But then maybe you say, let's say, oh, that kick doesn't have enough low end. So let me go boost the lows here. There we go. Now we have some low end. Now it... It's not as clear in the high end. Let's get some highs. Then you say something like, I remember Joe saying I need to cut at 400 on drums. And so you do. Ironically, you're hearing that first low note is actually the bass amp which was in the other room but still got picked up by the drum mics a little bit okay so for a lot of people this is their starting point i know that's probably exaggerated but i'll tell you sometimes i get mixes back that sound like that and i'm not saying this if you if you f f are guilty of this this isn't me trying to tell you that you're terrible and that I'm so much better than you. It's just these these are the exact things that I used to do when I was learning how to mix as well. And the bad thing is I didn't have anybody to tell me, so I just kept doing them. So it took a long time to learn those lessons. So consider this me kind of reaching out and saying, hey, buddy, uh, you can probably get away with less. But let's keep going. This is kind of fun. Let's make the bass sound terrible. So probably like EQ, say, okay, I can't hear it as well. Let's boost. Ah, oh, okay. OK, 
Okay, now I can hear it, and I guess I should put a compressor on there. Okay, great, love it. Let's move on to, let's bring in the keyboard parts. Well, I remember somebody saying that we don't want anything to get in the way of the low end, so I'm gonna take all the lows out of these. Okay, now I can really hear that top end there. Okay, let's bring in the electric guitar. Definitely need some compression, right? Let's compress that sucker. That actually does sound kind of cool. Um, and then let's, of course, let's EQ it. It's a little muddy, let's do that. There we go. And then acoustic guitar. Oh, it's too quiet. Let's compress that sucker. Here we go. I can hear it, but I can hear myself tapping my foot in the background. Let's roll off any low end so it's not. There we go. So this is an obvious, exaggerated example of what can happen in a mix, but I bet you can kind of get the point. I've I've gotten mixes back from folks um, where this is not too far from the way the mix sounds. And while I haven't sat there next to them in the mix position, seeing exactly what they're doing, just by listening, I can kind of tell what's going on in the mix and where the problems are. Now, here's the the thing that you should do. If there's no other takeaway from this than this, please do this on your next mix. I'm listening to the song, and Studio One gives me this activate all inserts button where I can bypass all the plugins. Most systems have some way of doing that, whether it's row by row or all of them at once. But let's just see, have we made anything better? So we're going to start by listening to the plugins, and then I'll turn them all off and back on a few times so we can compare. The best word I can use to describe the processed mix is exaggerated. Uh, yes, it's brighter than the, dr the raw tracks. And yes, I would like to bring out a little clarity in those raw tracks to make them all a little bit brighter. Um, but this, what we've done here, we brought out way too much clarity and there's way too much unsettled low end here, way too much compression. There's just too much of everything. And, and that's not to even mention, uh, some folks go nuts with things like reverbs and they'll do something like this which obviously just compounds the problems but this again this this whole video has been just with EQ and compression on the buses for these tracks and you can see 
Um, I'm a big fan of top-down mixing. I'm a big fan of just using tools like EQ and compression for the most part, but you've got to use them in a way that is reasonable, in a way that shows restraint, and in a way that if you do this and you bypass them and turn them back on, you're hearing improvement, not just, not just louder. And that's kind of the big thing I want to get across in this video. Hope this was fun for you. It was kind of fun for me. Go try to ruin a mix. You might actually learn some things that'll help you in your normal mixing process if you just take 15 minutes to go just completely go hog wild and ruin a mix and then maybe come back and try to do it right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for watching. By the way, if you see me using EQ and compression and you think, you know what, I kind of do that as well. Um, I kind of boost a lot of things and do way too much compression and I don't quite know what I'm doing with those controls. Uh, I have bundled my EQ and compression courses into one course or one bundle for a great price. You can check that out at under, I'm sorry. You can check that out at homestudiocorner.com slash EQ. Go check that out. Thanks for watching. See ya.